We're about to talk about practice, y'all. We're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We are talking about practice, as the great Allen Iverson would say. We are definitely going to talk about practice. But the good thing is, this is overreaction season, baby. Luckily, the beat writers for Oklahoma had the opportunity to go watch some practice. They dropped us a bunch of videos through the social medias. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to dissect it. And basically get our hopes up once again, like we always do. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. I know it's been a bit. Got back from March Madness. Enjoyed myself. And so, yeah, we're going to dive into actual content. We got to see some players in actions. We got to see some offensive linemen and defensive linemen battle. And we also got to see what owners are looking good. So the beat writers got the opportunity to go out there and watch some practice get a little bit of film so about two hours they got to see some matchups and i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty excited man i'm ready for football to come unfortunately we're just about to hit april we ain't there but we do get the spring game so let's look into it but first off i want to shout out all of the beat writers out there um eddie and george over there at you know sooner scoop Shout out to Parker Thune and Brandon Drum out there at OU Insider. You know, uh, Bob Prisbillo, Jesse, all of them. Shout out to them. Eric Bailey with Tulsa World. All of them gets a shout out because they all put in work. Uh, Lewis over there at uh, OU Daily Sports. I put some of the links of the videos they had in the description below because they deserve a shout out for getting us this content, right? They gave us some nice videos, stuff to talk about. So I want to dive into about, I think about six things that jumped out to me in some of the videos I saw and some of the things that I've read floating around the internet. And so let's jump right into it. And so the Sooners having this practice, showing off some players. First off, let's start from the back. Let's start from the offensive side, working our way onto defense. Quarterback. Jackson Arnold was slinging it. I mean, his throws look good. He had some spin to him. And he was hitting, of course, those wide receivers that we're excited about. You saw some Deion Burks. You saw some route running by Jaleel Farouk, who talked about in an interview afterwards about trying to get past the Alamo Bowl situation. Same thing with Jackson Arnold. They really talked about how they're getting past that. They're focusing on next season and how the team was, you know, everybody's encouraging them and pushing them forward. That's what we need. You know, you got to get over those mistakes and go do better. So from them, you move up into, of course, the running back room. You saw some Gavin Salchuk, Javante Barnes appears to be healthy. He talked about not feeling right last season and how he never even considered hitting the portal, which kind of shocking revelation, but I'm glad to hear that he does feel better. And he also talked about, you know, he's feeling 100% healthy in comparison to last season which means we should get the Javante Barnes we were expecting coming after that freshman performance and that Florida State performance in the Cheez-It Bowl. Then you had something, you saw some Caleb Hicks out there, and I saw some of Mecca Megwa. Herb Megwa was out there running with one of the units, and we got to see him. I'm hoping he's healthy, man. Him and Hicks, like the two yokish players on the team. They they look just stout. And I'm hoping that we get to see both of them get some run this coming season. And I also saw that Sam Franklin was putting up some uh some some cute nice little highlights to the point that he's going to be someone to consider. Now the bigger position that everybody cares the most about, offensive line. And we saw that uh my boy Brian Clinton, shout out to him as well, OU insider, he tweeted out that Troy Everett the starting center at this point it looks like uh tweaked his knee. He came out, couldn't put pressure on him when he walked, but then he walked off the Walked uh, out of the locker room. He had a, a uh, ice pack on his knee, and he's able to walk from there. But it sounds like they may have potentially avoided anything serious. But we're waiting to see, and you know, we got to hear what the MRI is, and hopefully, it's just some sort of a sprain, and he's out up until spring game. Don't matter because the one thing for Oklahoma is that offensive line is quote unquote thin. But the good thing about the thinness of that offensive line is we got a lot of freshmen that look good, right? You saw some Eugene Brooks out there. And he looked like he was muscling some folks. Uh, Danny Akinkumi was battling out with David Stone. We'll talk about the defensive line afterwards. But he got him some battles in. He looked kind of solid. He threw Zeta looks like he stepped up. And so Eric uh, Bailey over there at the Tulsa World put out who he saw on that offensive line for the first three groups. I'm going to tell you all this. Yeah, make sure you all check out the article. It's in the description below. Michael Tarkin at the left tackle, Heath Uzeda, Troy Everett, Fabichi Weiwu, and Jake Taylor on the right, which was pretty interesting. I thought that you'd see more Sexton, but I think they want to test some stuff out. 
You saw Logan Howland, Ekin Kumi, Bates, Eugene Brooks, and on the right, Spencer Brown. In the second group, in the third group, you had Sexton, Kenneth Wormley, Ty Kubicek, Gunnar Allen, and right tackle was another potential walk-on player. And that's in the third group. So it looked like we were playing around with rosters, with lineups. But I'm sensing that we're going to see Sexton and Jake Taylor as your two tackles. I mentioned this before. Wei Wu Ozeda and then Troy Everett in the middle. Just cross the fingers and toes is what it ends up being. But that's what it looks like in my personal opinion. Offensive line did look pretty solid overall. The reports are they did look pretty good. While at the same time, they they had some battles for them because... It appears that that, you know, 70 something percent of returning production on defensive side showed out. The defense was stout. So let's talk about that. But that was offense. Hop in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. What jumped out to y'all when you saw the reports, when you saw the videos? Of course, we want to hear from you all. What jumped out to you and got your attention? Defensively, look at that defensive line, right? You saw Dejan Terry and Grayson Hall together, right? G-Baby looks like he's ready for a breakout season. If we can get his weight up in the 290 range, man, he may be a problem. I think right now he's in the 280s. We need him in the 290, 300 range to get with Dejan Terry, who's sitting at like 322. We need another biggie. We need another, as we call him, fatty war daddies. <laughs> We're gonna, we got to get one out the portal. And there's one that I, it's supposed to be visiting very soon. I think we may land him because he's not visiting when he was supposed to. He's visiting a week earlier, and that's got my attention and got me excited. So we will dive into him in a minute. But defensive tackle-wise, you saw Terry. You saw Grayson Hall. Then you got to see a little bit of Jaden Jackson as well as David Stone, and they looked pretty solid. Ash and Champ Sanders, as well as Marcus Strong, was there. But really, Stoney stood out. Of course, he did. Him and Akinkumi battling it out. I love seeing the iron sharpening iron. And, I mean, on top of that, you got to see a video of uh, Nigel Smith out there giving uh, Spencer Brown the blues. Not going to lie, man. That was kind of embarrassing just watching (laughs) Spencer get the blues from him. But we also know that Nigel Smith's going to be a quiet storm going into next season, right? And so going back into your linebackers, we did see Desan McCullough. He talked about how he was dealing with knee injuries after the Bedlam game, and but he was able to play some will position as well as Cheetah. So he's playing a combination of linebacker backer as well as Cheetah, and it looks like they're going to have that man do a lot of blitzing, in which he did a lot of that at Indiana. We're going to get more of that out on this coming season. Transfer Caden Woolard looked huge and monstrous. Just understand we may have hit some jackpots with some of these transfers because the dude has, he plays, he looks the part. I mean, he's over 260 and he's fast. Hands can move. I think Oklahoma may have lucked out with that one. So going from there though, as you get into your secondary, Woody Washington was all over the place. You got to see that he played in multiple positions, mainly because you can throw a Kendall Doby out there. A Des Malone is getting comfortable. Josiah Wagner is still turning heads. Right, Jacoby Johnson, I saw him in a couple of drills. I'm like, okay, looks like we got something going on. Gentry Williams, of course, is out because of the shoulder surgery. But the good thing is, is that because he had labrum surgery, he should be good and healthy come fall. He's already locked down at start corner. We're not concerned about him, right? He's CB1. But there's going to be some people challenging him, which is good. Because our boy who came onto the show recently, Kendall Doby, he was shown out in the combination of corner as well as playing at the cheetah role. Sammy Omosigo got himself a pick that they got on video. The team just put out the propaganda for it. It got me excited. I think he intercepted Brendan Zerbrook, but he 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 looks good, right? Sammy Omosigo is about to make that jump. I think Kip, somebody mentioned Kip didn't really participate much, but we did get the Jaden Rowe as well as Phil Pachati sighting, right? Guys that have been dealing with injuries as well as Eric McCarty. We got to see that there was a sighting of those three guys who had injuries situations last season injury had surgeries McCarty got hurt before he got to Oklahoma Pachati got hurt when he got to Oklahoma and then Jaden Rowe has been dealing with shoulder problems since he came here the last two years looks like they're gonna make some moves Jaden Rowe's a big dude I tweet this out six he's overseas six two he's a track kid so we all know that because he's a track guy he's fast but he's also a big corner something you need I think he's closer to like 200 pounds too in size so yeah, I would like to see more Jaden Rowe. 
Looks like he worked some safety as well as corner, but shoot, all that matters to me is that man's on the field. Give me more of him. And then, you know, wrapping it up, linebackers, of course, you know, you had just Tutsman doing what he does best. Canick looked like he was working closely with them, and then you had your rotations behind them from Kip, Kobe McKenzie, uh, playing out, and Omosigo. And so, yeah, guys, we... We, we have reason to be really, really excited coming out this first set of practices. These reports look very promising. And of course, it's all propaganda, right? You know, we're going to be excited regardless because we know that we got something. But all I'm telling y'all is be excited about what we've got coming forward. Hop in the comments. Let your boy know your thoughts. How y'all feeling about these Sooners? What y'all think about the look for the Oklahoma Sooners going into this coming spring? If you made it this far, you like the content, please hit my like button if you're new to the channel. Subscribe. Got a couple more videos dropping over the next couple of days. We're going to talk about this transfer that moved up his visit tomorrow that I think is something y'all need to know about today and be excited about because I have a feeling that we're going to land this player. And then, of course, we've got a couple other visits uh, over on the recruiting channel, Sooner or Later Sports. We're going to be talking about a few more. Uh, we got We landed in the top six of a couple of players and we've got an announcement tomorrow coming down that I am sensing is going to be a sooner. So let me know y'all thoughts. Make sure you check out one of these other videos. We're going to get back to rolling on the content. We've got stuff to talk about now because all the rankings are coming out, lists are coming out. We're going to lose our mind. So we'll talk soon. Peace.